Hello and welcome to this week's bonus episode of Planet Critical, the podcast for a world in crisis. My name is Rachel Donald. I'm an independent climate corruption journalist investigating greenwashing and the financial and political corruption driving the climate crisis around the world. And of course, producing this podcast, which is all about revealing the bigger picture as to why the world is in crisis and what we can do about it. This week, I spoke with Chris Smage. Chris is a former academic turned small farmer uh, who wrote the book Small Farm Future to explain the different crises driving the world, uh, including food systems, political and cultural, and how creating localized food systems is one way in which people can combat uh, the increasing instability of the world that we live in um, and combat the incredible inefficiency of our current food system. Um, A stat that comes up a lot on this podcast is that it costs 10 times the amount of energy to produce food as we get from eating it. So it is quite literally one of the most inefficient and ineffective uh, systems that we have created, industrialized agriculture. The thing that I want to touch on in this bonus video is the uh, narrative strategy that Chris and I sort of touch on towards the end, which is how people feel about farming, the idea of having to become a farmer in the future, um, the relationship with, you know, our our relationship to peasantry in the past and serfdom um, and how we can sell it better to the public. And one of the things that uh, we discuss in the episode is the increasing precarity of the world that we live in, how disconnected people are from uh, their food and from their communities, um, how disempowered, and the word I used was infantilized people are. The fact, it's it's quite a strange thing to be a biological organism and not know how to feed oneself, for example. Um, And what we get into is how selling farming, um, local farming, people, communities producing their own food, uh, one way to sell it would be to say to people, well, this is how you regain your autonomy from a system that is rigged against you. This is how you gain freedom from capitalism. This is how you gain freedom from precarity. This is how you gain freedom from the rat race. Um, and only once gaining freedom from these things will you then have freedom too. And this is a distinction that Margaret Atwood makes in her book, The Handmaid's Tale, um, the difference between freedom from and freedom to. And we live in a world where freedom is freedom, freedom from, and that, that's not good enough. You shouldn't just be safe from violence or safe from hunger and starvation. You should, as a human being, be free to do the things that you, that you want to do, free to spend time with your loved ones, free to develop yourself, free to develop your community. Um, and this freedom from precarity and freedom from capitalism could lead to freedom to localized communities, happier communities, happier people, um, and be one of the most effective ways to exit uh, the economic system that we're all sort of trapped in, which clearly isn't working for anybody. This is kind of like the, the, the degrowth argument. It seems that once you kind of tease it apart, it's so obvious. Why, why wouldn't people want to be free from um, economic instability, certainly my generation, why wouldn't you want to be free from dependence on salaries in order to pay rent to a landlord and buy food from a supermarket and you don't know where it's coming from and you don't know what's in it and you don't know if it's really good for you and it probably isn't. Um, why wouldn't you want to be free from the limitations of the modern world that are perpetuating crises, perpetuating mental health problems um, and driving the climate crisis, right? Anyone who's listened to this show for a while will know that I have had a (laughs) strange relationship with the idea that one day I might have to farm. Um, It's despite having all of the information, uh, all of the information, despite having a lot of information and despite experts taking the time to really explain to me and my listeners that it is (laughs) necessary um, I have felt huge resistance to the idea, um, perhaps because in my mind, it sounds like peasantry from before. It sounds like serfdom. Um, and I believe every, everybody I've ever spoken to that works the land says that they absolutely love it and it has given them such a source of joy. And I believe them. I really do. And yet there is still this block for me personally. And thus, I think it's important now at this stage for us to be talking about, well, Actually, what, what does work the land mean? It, it, 
isn't going to look like peasantry um, when before you were working the land of somebody else in order to produce their resource that they could capitalize on and then have some to feed the community. Um, it wouldn't be, um, I mean, sometimes it'd be backbreaking work, but not all the time. It's like a couple of hours a day. It's spending time with people that you love. I keep coming back to that, but it's so important. It's the joy of knowing where your food comes from and then also having time to do other things, freedom to do other things. Even the idea of distributing food to your community sounds great. Just go about giving people food, having a chat, finding out how your neighbors are getting involved on, on that kind of level and having such a profound relationship. And because it is, surely, should be the most, I mean, it's the most uh, profound primordial relationship that between child and mother, you know, that which feeds. But I think beyond these value systems, communicating it to a fed up <laughs> generation um, of people my generation and an increasingly scared generation, Gen Z, that they have an opportunity to opt out if they can figure out how to feed themselves, in a sense. Not opt out of everything, of course. And the idea isn't to opt out, it is to opt in and choose what you're opting into. That just seems like such a phenomenal message that many people would take up and would speak to very many people. The whole problem with the modern world that we live in today is that, well, one of the problems, um, in a world of abundance, we have so little choice because of extractive capitalism, because resources are directed towards the few. Keeping your head above water demands so much energy and requires so much sacrifice, in a sense, um, which I personally think then drives the culture of, of consumerism and consumption, because the one thing that people can choose to do is what to spend their money on. They can't choose probably how much they'll have of it, but they can choose what to spend it on. That's the one last choice we have as citizens. We don't even get to choose between real political parties. Um, so saying to people that you, you have other options as long as you can feed yourself. <laughs> it's that fundamental thing, food and shelter, which traps people within um, economic systems and within political systems. We, f we can figure out locally how to do that key thing. Then surely it opens up the whole world to possibility, really. I imagine there would be much more art and music and literature and joy in communities like that. And lots of hard work, but hard work where the return on your investment is immediate and it is the fruits of your own labor, literally. That's enough for me today. Thank you everyone for watching this little bonus video. Do let me know what you think or of the podcast episodes, leave a comment. Uh, also, if there's somebody that you want me to interview, leave a comment below. I will pick it up, I will see it, I will hunt them down and request that they come on Planet Critical. If you're new here, also remember to subscribe. And if you're a long-time listener and you're really enjoying the show, consider supporting Planet Critical on Patreon. The link is in the description box below. Supporting Planet Critical also directly supports my investigations into climate corruption around the world. So a huge thank you to the Planet Critical community who make all of this work possible. Thank you all for watching. I hope this is valuable to you in some way. And I will see you next week.